Hello, I'm David Frazier with Investors Monitor, and this is our Daily Market Insights Show, where we strive to tell you everything that you need to know, but nothing more, about factors and developments that are likely to impact the value of your financial market portfolios. Well, uh, yesterday we got a uh, fairly decent uh, uh, up move in the, the major U.S. stock market indices with the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, moving up uh, 220 points or 1.4 percent on Tuesday, uh, September the 15th, and the uh, S&P 500 index moving up approximately 1.3 percent. But if you look at the trading action in the U.S. stock market over the past couple of weeks, we've really just had volatile sideways movement. And more importantly, on days that the major indices have moved up in price, they've done so on lighter and lighter trading volume. And what is that telling us? It's telling us that there's been very few persons, in relative terms, participating in the recent uh, stock market advances. Uh, that this is probably primarily uh, relatively small individual investors and speculators thinking uh, that they're buying stocks at some bargain prices. But if we look at uh, what some very reliable economic statistics uh, have been telling us, uh, it's not the time to be buying stocks. And, 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 and people who think they're getting bargain prices are probably not getting bargain prices because the indicators that we follow uh, it suggests that stock prices are going to trend lower over the next few months. Now, as I said several times over the past couple of weeks on our uh, Market Insights show, uh, I don't see anything suggesting that the U.S. economy is going to go into a recession, and I do not see stock prices in general collapsing like they did during 2008. However, uh, the statistics and indicators that we follow that have been very reliable since uh, I created our tactical asset and sector allocation model uh, during 1986. Since then, uh, the indicators that compose that model, overall, the, the net reading on those indicators has been very, very reliable over the past approximately 30 years. For example, uh, that model uh, gave a sell signal during March of 2000 uh, right about uh, the time that U.S. stock prices peaked uh, back in the year 2000. And um, it uh, allowed us to get people that listened to us, and we were not running this firm at the time, but uh, uh, still, uh, you know, I was in uh, the financial markets at the time, and, and I held jobs uh, in, in the financial services industry. And um, that model... Uh, uh, said to get out of stocks in, in March 2000 and, and, and way before uh, or right near the peak in stock prices. It then gave a buy signal during October of 2002 in the same month that the S&P 500 index uh, um, bottomed. Uh, then it gave a sell signal again only three weeks before U.S. stock prices peaked uh, during um, October of 2007 and gave another buy signal during early 2009, very near the bottom in stock prices. So, you know, these statistics that I mention on this show on a regular basis, they may not be terribly exciting to uh, those of you that tune into this show, but uh, this show is a, and it's not about entertaining you. It's not, it's, it's not about uh, telling you something that sounds exciting. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're looking for entertainment, then this is probably not the show for you. You should probably go and watch the major financial media. But um, if you're serious about your financial market investments and speculations and, and even short-term trading, I urge you to t tune into this show every day. Um, you judge for yourself. Uh, as I said, we focus on the, the factors that matter without a bunch of the nonsense in the entertainment that you're going to see in the general financial media. So, uh, today on uh, Wednesday, September 16th, uh, early this morning, uh, futures trading, that is trading 
uh, in the futures markets here in the United States indicates that it, as it did yesterday that uh, stock prices in general are going to open up flat today on Wednesday September 16th. Now just like I told you yesterday even though futures indicated the same thing yesterday morning you know we saw the Dow Jones Industrial rise over 220 points yesterday so I don't know where stocks are, are headed uh, throughout the trading day today on Wednesday September 16th and um, I, I've never claimed to be able to get uh, uh, any forecast correct regarding the very short-term direction of stock prices uh, over the course of a few days or a few weeks and I don't even try to get uh, within a few months of peaks and bottoms even though we've been very very good at that so having said all that let's move forward what what um, what do uh, what do I expect I guess regarding um, uh, tomorrow's uh, interest rate decision by the Fed that's apparently what is on a lot of people's minds and I don't know whether it is or not maybe it's just the, the media that uh, wants to put that th thought on people's minds because uh, it's very entertaining. I mean, I saw one show early this morning that had a ca uh, caption that read, uh, um, uh, impending uh, rate hike decision. Rate hike decision. Not impending uh, rate decision or, or impending rate maintenance decision, but impending rate hike decision. In other words, subconsciously trying to suggest that the Fed's more likely to increase rates uh, than it is to keep them where they are. And, uh, you know, that's entertainment for you. That, that, get, that gets people to tune in. That's not what uh, the data is telling us. So if the Federal Reserve really does go by the data, then there's no way, there is no way that the Fed is going to increase its short-term lending rates, its overnight boring rate, rate, that is the target Fed funds rate, on Thursday, September 17th. It's not going to do it if it really does go by what the data is saying. And the reason I say that is I look at the, a lot of the same data that the Fed reviews on a regular basis. And as I've told you for at least a couple of weeks now, not only do a large number of leading economic indicators suggest that the pace of economic growth here in the United States is going to slow over the next few months, but the readings on some key coincident indicators, that is uh, economic statistics that tend to move in the same direction as the overall economy and to change direction at about the same time as changes in the overall economy. Well, the latest reading on those coincident economic statistics, retail sales and industrial production and wages and salaries being uh, three of the more reliable coincident indicators, well, they're also saying not only that the pace of economic growth is likely to slow over the next few months, but uh, that economic growth uh, has likely already slowed um, over the um, uh, past couple months. So, um, I mean, you just look at what I discussed yesterday with re industrial production uh, declining uh, during August, retail sales slowing substantially during August. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Today, we got a, uh, a statistic out of, from the Mortgage Bankers Association showing that uh, mortgage applications fell for the second week in a row last week. Now, that's only two weeks, but still, you know, that's two weeks in a row that mortgage applications fell in, in pretty sharply, actually, down approximately 7% last week compared to the prior week. Secondly, uh, the latest uh, inflation numbers uh, for the United States uh, regarding inflation at the uh, so-called consumer level, that is the individual and household level, this, the consumer price index, the CPI uh, actually declined uh, last month, very, very modestly, but still it did fall last month as compared to uh, the pr uh, prior month. And on a year-over-year -year basis, the CPI, the consumer price index, was only up 0.2% as compared to the same month a year ago. So if the Fed goes by the data, they're not going to raise interest rates. That doesn't mean that they won't raise rates for some other reason, but not if they're going to go by the data. This is pretty darn clear to me. Uh, I'm, so that's really all that I have to say about that. Now, um, how stocks are going to react to tomorrow's decision by the Fed? I don't have a clue. All I know is, is what I've said several times over the past couple of weeks. We got uh, folks that um, uh, subscribe to our uh, investment journals 
We got them almost entirely out of the stock market on May 6th of this year, meaning um, folks that follow our fixed income model portfolio, we, we, still, we kept those people in those fixed income securities, most of them at least, because you know they, those folks need to generate some regular monthly income. But for people that tend to be more growth oriented or speculative in their stock market holdings, we told those folks to get 100% out of stocks on May 6th of this year, only a week and a half approximately uh, before uh, uh, the S&P 500 index peaked on May 21st. So we're not concerned what the Fed does. We don't care. You know, we don't try to pick absolute peaks and bottoms. What we strive to do here at Frazier and Research, at Frazier and Mayer Research LLC, the providers of Investors Monitor, is to help investors, speculators, and traders to avoid the big downturns and to participate and profit from the big upturns. So, you know, we're about a lot about managing risk, not, not just helping our clients to make money. So, having said that, I uh, encourage uh, those of you that are watching this show, as I always do, if you're uh, not watching this show at our internet website, I encourage you to go to our website at www.investorsmarket.com. That's www.investorsmonitor.com. And... Um, there's a sign-up form on the home page of our site uh, where you can sign up to receive our weekly market commentary uh, that's 100% free and all you need to do is put in your uh, name and email address and we'll keep you updated week to week of major factors and developments uh, that have not all just already affected the financial markets but are likely to affect the markets during the weeks and months ahead. So I thank you uh, for tuning in. And um, we look forward to having you back on uh, Thursday morning. Thank you.